Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials, and today's element is going to be thorium. Thorium dioxide used to be used in gas mantles, however due to its radioactivity, nowadays cerium and lanthanum oxides are used in gas mantles instead. Thorium dioxide is still used in thoria to tungsten welding electrodes, however, so I headed on to eBay and bought 10 rods for $8. These rods contain 98% tungsten and 2% thorium dioxide. Tungsten will dissolve in hydrogen peroxide to form tungstic acid, so the initial thought was to dissolve away the tungsten, leaving the thorium dioxide. After placing 5 rods in a graduated cylinder and leaving it in 30% hydrogen peroxide for 2 months, however, only 2 grams of the rods dissolved. I filtered the solution to obtain a bit of thorium dioxide that was liberated, and then saved the tungstic acid solution. To finish processing the rest of the rods, however, we will use an electrochemical method to dissolve the tungsten, as the hydrogen peroxide is too inefficient. To set up the apparatus, we can first use two alligator clips to attach two tungsten electrodes to the edges of the graduated cylinder. 20 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 100 milliliters of water is then added to the graduated cylinder. The other ends of the alligator clips are attached to a 5 volt DC power supply to begin the dissolution. The vigorous bubbling at the negative electrode is hydrogen gas, while the density different lines seen at the positive electrode are from sodium tungstate forming and diffusing away from the electrode. As a note, only the positive electrode will dissolve, so a non-tungsten negative electrode can be used. As the rod dissolves, the thorium dioxide falls to the bottom and settles. After approximately 6 hours, 9 of the tungsten rods had dissolved. Some bits of the tungsten rods flaked away and settled to the bottom, so not all of the tungsten was dissolved, however. The thorium dioxide also contained bits of undissolved tungsten, so the large chunks of rod were removed, and the thorium dioxide was rinsed, and then added to about 200 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide to finish dissolving the remaining tungsten. While that is dissolving, we can convert the sodium tungstate and tungstic acid to tungsten trioxide. First, the tungstic acid solution is added to the sodium tungstate, and excess sodium hydroxide will react to form more sodium tungstate. Next, we can add about 200 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid to convert the sodium tungstate to tungstic acid, which precipitates out. Concentrated hydrochloric acid can be purchased from hardware stores as muriatic acid. Interestingly, the precipitate was initially white, even though the tungstic acid is yellow. However, after mixing the solution, it took on a light canary yellow color. The solution was vacuum filtered and then transferred to an oven at about 150 degrees Celsius to decompose the tungstic acid to tungsten trioxide. The decomposition occurs around 100 degrees Celsius. After sitting in the hydrogen peroxide solution for a few days, the thorium dioxide powder lightened in color as the residual tungsten contamination dissolved. The thorium dioxide was filtered and heated to about 250 degrees Celsius to fully dry the powder. After dehydrating the tungsten trioxide and thorium dioxide, 17.06 grams of tungsten trioxide and 0.17 grams of off-white thorium dioxide was obtained. From the 9 rods dissolved, 0.40 grams of thorium dioxide was expected, however approximately 2 grams of tungsten didn't dissolve, and some of the thorium dioxide was lost during filtration, so the lower yield was expected. The tungsten trioxide can be saved for a future project where we will attempt to reduce it with carbon in an arc furnace back to tungsten metal. This experiment was done back when I was in high school, and I took the thorium dioxide to school and borrowed their Geiger counter to ensure it was radioactive. It was slightly radioactive above background radiation, which is a good sign. To convert the thorium dioxide to thorium metal, we can reduce it with an excess of calcium metal at high temperatures in my homemade arc furnace. The arc furnace was made by rewinding the coils on an old 45 pound iron core transformer that I found behind a dumpster. To prevent reoxidation of the thorium, I added some sodium carbonate on top of the thorium and calcium to protect it from the atmosphere. The sodium carbonate decomposes to sodium oxide at high temperatures and protects the thorium that is formed. After heating the mixture to several thousand degrees Celsius for a minute or so, the product was allowed to cool and then scraped into a beaker. A solution of 20 grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliters of water is then added to the mixture to dissolve residual calcium metal, sodium oxide, and calcium oxide. Keeping the solution basic prevents the dissolution of thorium metal, which will react slowly in pure water. After stirring the mixture for a few moments, the solution was filtered to remove the insoluble contents. The filter paper contains thorium metal, calcium hydroxide, and small pieces of brick that were scraped off after the heating. 
There are some small blobs of thorium metal with some surface oxidation present in the residue, which had to be manually separated out. After removing the visible thorium pieces, the metal was sealed in an evacuated ampule to prevent atmospheric oxidation of the thorium. In total, 0.011 grams of thorium metal was obtained. Although it is a small amount, it's still a bit of a really cool radioactive metal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a future project. Okay, bye.